Okay, so in this video, we're going to follow up using the LAMA2 70 billion model for some retrieval QA. So this is just the basic chat model that I'm using here. So it is fine-tuned for instruct use here. You can see here that I'm using the together compute one that we looked at in the last video of how to set this up. Really, the way you're using the model, whether you're using an API, whether you're loading it yourself with more GPUs, etc., really shouldn't make a difference to this, right? The way I've set it up is here, I'm using the Together API. So I'm going to have to make a Langchain LLM here, which I've basically just set up there. And then I'm just going to bring in a zip file with a bunch of different papers in it. So the papers, I think, are Flash Attention paper, Llama 2 paper, Toolformer, and the React paper, maybe a couple of others, oh, and, and then Augmenting LLMs paper in, in there. The idea here is that we're going to basically just bring these in. We're going to you know, have multiple PDF files. We're going to stick them into Chroma DB, so we're not having to put this in the cloud. We're not having to do anything like that. And this is fully open source here that we're using the model that we're allowed to use. We're using Chroma locally. I guess the one thing that, you know, here is that this is probably not technically a local model in that it's where you're pinging it from the, the cloud, but you could be running this locally if you've got enough GPUs to do this here. So then we're basically just going to bring it into uh, Langchain. We're bringing in Chroma. I'm bringing in the directory loader for this. The embeddings that I'm using here are the instructor embeddings. Now there are some new embeddings that have come out recently, which are supposedly getting better scores than these. I'll probably do a video about looking at some of those. I still think the instructor embeddings are a really good way to just go for a really solid embedding. And you'll see that in this, they really seem to work well too in relation to the questions and finding the right context back. So then I'm just going to basically ingest in these PDF files. That's what we're doing here. We're using the PI PDF loader to basically bring them in. Let's split them up into pages, et cetera, and, and chunks. And then we've got them, we've got these documents now. Now the documents I'm going to split with a character splitter. I'm not a fan of the character splitter. You know, really, I think there are a lot more intelligent ways of, of splitting text than doing it like this. The crazy thing though, is it still pretty much works. I do like to have an, a chunk overlap so that if you've got one idea between two chunks of text, you want it to basically be overlapped so that you can actually get that in one full chunk by itself. And then we basically just set up these it's a hugging face instructor embeddings. These are the embeddings from the Hong Kong University's NLP team. I'm using Instructor XL here. So it actually is a little bit slower on the T4 GPU for running this, as you'll see if you go through and run this yourself. So once we've got our embeddings, our embedding maker or our you know embedding model loaded, we can basically just go through and make the Chroma DB here using these instructor embeddings. And so this will take a, a bit of time because it's going to go through the 200 documents and they've now been split into chunks of a thousand characters. And it's going to go through and embed each of these into this. Once this is run, you will see on your drive here, you will see that you've got your database there all locally for this. So next up is to build our retriever. So we're going to just be using a vector store retriever here. We're going to have the search arguments to be k equals five, meaning we're returning back five uh, contexts from this. And what I'm going to do is actually have a little citation that basically tells us which PDF file it came from in there as well. So that's something that I know a lot of people want to know. Okay, where did these this answer come from in the chunks of information there? And so while we're not being specific of showing quotes and stuff like that here, we are showing that, oh, it came from this PDF or from a combination of these PDFs. All right, I basically then just instantiate my Llama 2 70 billion chat model here. I've got the temperature set to 0.1. I've got max tokens set to 1024 in here. I then basically just assemble the retrieval chain here. So here I'm just basically passing in the LLM. We're just going to stuff everything in. We shouldn't have any problems fitting into the 4096 context window of Llama 2 here. So we're just going to use stuff. The retriever is our Chroma DB, which is going to basically return five contexts from the actual answers that we've got there. And then I've got a few little 
sort of helper functions just so that we can see. So we're returning source documents equals true here. And we're basically just using that to work out, okay, where did the PDF come from in here? So, so once we've got that done, ready to actually go through this quite simply. So here you can see, I start off with just asking it, okay, what is flash attention? And this is actually the flash attention one paper, not the, the newer flash attention two paper that we've got in here. And you can see that, okay, we've got this, what is flash attention? Flash attention is a new attention algorithm that computes exact attention with far fewer memory accesses. So it's giving us a bunch of information about it. It's also giving us the sources. So remember we set K equals five in this example, and all five contacts have come back from the flash attention PDF. So that shows that our embeddings are looking up, you know, quite nicely from taking this question, embedding it, and looking for the most similar examples in our Chroma database there. We can see that doing this, there's a follow-up question about IO aware mean from flash attention. Here it's basically able to get that as well. What if we ask it something about Llama 2? So here you can see I ask it, okay, what is the context window of Llama? And it comes back, the context window of Llama 2 is 4,096 tokens, which is correct. Now it's interesting that a number of times it gets some of these sort of weird things where polite answer, I don't know, but it's actually given us the answer already in here. Again, we can see that our embeddings have worked well for this one and this one in that we've asked about Llama 2, we've got Llama 2 back. How many tokens was Llama 2 trained on? Llama 2 was trained on 2 trillion tokens of data. What about, you know, asking it something that it doesn't know? When is Llama 3 coming? And this is where I think that this model is pretty good is that we see, I don't know, the paper only discusses Llama 2 and its variants. There's no mention of Llama 3. This will have returned things that have been closest to this kind of query, but none of these would have actually mentioned Llama 3. So the language models had to basically go through it itself and look for, okay, what, you know, is there a mention of Llama 3 in here? Is the relevant information in here? Now, some of the danger with smaller or less well-trained open source models is that you will see with this kind of thing that it will just make up an answer because it uses something from in here. So it's quite good that it hasn't done that here. What about if we try and confuse it even more and I say to it, okay, what is the new model from Meta called? Now here, this is a trick question because it could be Llama 2, which is what the answer gives us, but it also could be Toolform because Toolform also came out of Meta. And remember, there's no dates on these papers, I don't think, where it's basically using that to make the decision. So we can see that the sources it's getting, it gets two from Llama 2 from augmenting LLMs and another one from the Llama 2 one as well. So the augmenting LLM survey is basically mentioning a lot of different models. So my guess is that that's why it gets some of the things out of there. But in this case, it does come back with the, okay, it thinks that the new model is called Llama 2. But it also then talks about the safety reward model, which was used for the RLHF in Llama 2 chat model and or the helpfulness reward model. Again, these are kind of interesting that they get returned in there. It's a little bit of an unfair question, but it's good to test out your system and see like how it will respond to things like this. Next up, what is Toolformer? Straight away, it's able to get what Toolformer is. It basically... It gives us okay definition. I wouldn't say it's a great definition of what Toolformer is. What tools can be used with Toolformer? Okay, search engines, calculators, translation systems via API calls. How many examples do we need to provide for each tool? So this is interesting because this certainly is something that you know, would have been mentioned both in Toolformer and the survey paper that covers Toolformer and other papers like that. So we see some things about that. And um, what about React? So we've got the React paper in there. Sure enough, React is a novel prompt-based paradigm that combines reasoning and acting in language models for general task solving. That's a pretty nice definition that's given us there for looking at this. So on the whole, I think this model's done pretty good. Now, if you were going to use this in the real world, you probably wouldn't just go with this model straight out of the box. You would go for a fine-tuned version that was going to be better on your particular types of retrieval questions and you, you know what you were going for like that so from testing this i can see that okay this has got potential 
And then I would look at, okay, are there some fine tunes out there that focus more on the RAG or retrieval augmented generation tasks? Or I would look at making one myself. And perhaps that's something we can look at in a future video here. Finally, because I'm using the API in this case, I just basically stop it so that I'm not going to be charged anything else for this. If you're using your four GPUs, you probably also want to stop them to not get a big bill for that, unless you're running them locally, I guess. Anyway, so this sort of just shows you the strength of Llama 2 for doing uh, retrieval QA and for doing RAG or retrieval augmented generation. It's definitely something that can be done with this. For the best results, though, you will want to fine tune for your specific task for this. All right, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.